The optimal rest period for maximum muscle growth is different from what we thought years and years ago. As a matter of fact, this newer study is flat out, I mean flat out calling out the NSCA, National Strength and Conditioning Association, to change their guidelines. The NSCA has claimed that 30 to 60 seconds is the optimal rest period for maximal muscle growth. And it's based on, honestly, kind of bogus stuff. I don't understand like why this hasn't been changed yet. So the NSCA claims that 30 to 60 seconds is the optimal rest for muscle growth. And that's based upon hormonal changes that happen during the workout. I think most of us in the content sphere now, people that consume information online, know that like working out increases testosterone levels for a little bit after your workout. They looked at this and they said, well, since testosterone levels increase the most with 30 to 60 second like rests and high intense exercise, that's gonna be the best for muscle growth. Well, let me tell you something. If I were to go sprint right now, if I were to go sprint, that would cause a pretty big increase in my testosterone levels, probably more so than if I were to squat because sprinting is gonna be more intense. Does that mean that sprinting is gonna build more muscle than squatting? No. So most of us know that to be true. So this new study, check it out. It was a meta-analysis of nine different studies. It was really well put together. And they divided multiple different categories of rest periods. So a zero to 60 second rest, 61 to 119 second rest between sets, 120 to 179 second rest, and 180 second plus rest. It was pretty interesting data and we have a lot to take a look at. I'll give you the basics of it, but if you by any stretch, like take those basics and try to apply it, you're gonna kind of fall flat on your face because we need a lot more context. So I'll explain what they found. They basically found that roughly 60 seconds was a nice amount to be at for rest. 60 to 90 seconds seemed to be a sweet spot. One to two minutes overall was pretty good. And then after that, three minutes plus was really good for overall muscle growth. But two to three minutes was not as good. So one to two minutes was really good. Three minutes was really good. But two to three minutes was not as good. It's kind of confusing. What's going on here? Basically what we found is that rest periods are not as important as we thought, more so the volume that the rest periods allow us to do is important. What do I mean by that? Like, what does that mean? Well, we've known this in the interval space for a while, like high intensity interval training. In fact, I've often said that it's more important to have adequate rest so that your interval is effective than it is to have like a one-to-one -one ratio. For example, if I was running interval sprints on a treadmill, if I ran 60 seconds, I don't automatically need to take a 60 second rest. What I need to do is run for like 30 seconds and then take as much rest as I need to have an effective next 30 seconds, right? It's all about the recovery so that you can get the adequate set. So in this case, we're kind of learning this, right? It seems as though what's more important is the volume you get as a result of the rest, but it's still not that easy. And this is exercise science. We've gotta be nuanced. And you know what? The cool thing is this aligns a lot with what Dr. Mike Isratel says. And he and I have talked about just this thing. In fact, I'll do another video where we kind of expand on that. But in order to fully understand this, we have to look at older studies too, and then put some pieces together. So some of the same authors from this new paper were authors on a 2016 study that was pretty interesting that really uncovered a lot of stuff at the time, but then allowed this evolution to occur where we learned a lot more about exactly what the ultimate like, rest period and volume is for muscle building. So in this case, they divided people into two groups, a one minute rest period group and a three minute rest period group. And they had them train for eight weeks and they did seven exercises with three sets of eight to 12 reps. So volume was, you know, right around there. What they essentially found is that maximum strength came from the longer rest periods, the three minute rest period, as well as tricep growth and quad growth, which is really what they were measuring, came from the longer rests with the heavier weights. So basically they were able to rest more and ultimately able to lift more. So it sort of at the time confirmed this whole theory of mechanical tension being the most important thing for building muscle. Like the more load, the more tension you can put on the muscle, the more muscle you can build. Still a viable concept, but this is a big but, I want you to look at the chart that's on the screen right now. This is the maximum volume load. This is very important for this study. The volume load was the load, the weight, times reps, times sets. 
And if you look at the chart, the group that had the higher volume load was the group that had the longer rests. So basically, how much weight was moved through the whole workout? So if I could bench press a thousand pounds and I did 10 sets of bench press, I would have moved 10,000 pounds. If I bench pressed 500 pounds and I did 20 sets, I would have moved 10,000 pounds, right? So the idea is who moved more overall load throughout the course of a week or a workout? In this case, the three minute rest period, despite doing less reps, ultimately moved more load over the course of the week. And that seemed to equate to more muscle growth and strength but we need to keep going. Now, I wanna stop for a second and say that there's a couple things independent of this that may not have been looked at. Okay, they didn't necessarily look at their protein intake. Protein intake is number two. Stimulus is number one, protein intake number two, calories number three. Protein intake is super, super, super critical for muscle protein synthesis, for strength, and definitely for hypertrophy. So without equalizing and kind of looking at that, it's hard to see exactly, right? We weren't matching their diet per se, we can't say 100%. So I, being a nutrition guy, I come in and I'm like, what was the protein at? So keep the protein high. Also, muscle growth, I would highly recommend having like three to five grams of creatine, possibly even more. The evidence on creatine and muscle mass and strength is some of the most undeniable research that you're gonna find. It is absolutely strong. I would even go so far as saying the science is settled at this point, which is hard to say because creatine is very powerful and it is one of the most backed ergogenic aids that exists. I put a link down below for the preferred creatine that I use. I like to microdose my creatine throughout the day so I don't retain as much water. If I take like a five to 10 gram serving of creatine, I retain water pretty massively in the face and in the abdomen. But if I do like one to two grams multiple times per day, I find that I retain a lot less water. So the Create Creatine Gummies that I linked down below, that is a 50% off discount link. So 50% off Create Creatine Gummies, and they're sweetened with allulose, so they don't have added sugar. The only sugar that's in them is a couple of grams to help with creatine uptake. The rest is allulose, which is a natural sweetener that isn't sucralose or anything like that. And it can actually help modulate blood glucose. So one and a half grams of creatine per gummy. So you could just take like three or four gummies throughout the day, and they A, taste good, but B, you're not getting that water retention as much as you would in like in the extracellular space. You still get water retention inside the muscle and that creates internal leverage, which allows you to actually lift more, which is one of the reasons why creatine is effective as a muscle building supplement. Not just because it brings water in, but because it can draw water in and gives you more leverage so you can potentially lift more. But it also helps you, of course, increase ATP turnover. So you're getting more ATP and more overall strength, right? More power and energy to the muscle. So that link down below for 50% off, I highly, highly recommend you give those a shot. Four different flavors to try as well. So this newer 2022 study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research shows us straight up that it's not necessarily the rest period, it's the amount of volume that the rest allows to happen. Fascinating study took four groups, a long rest three minute interval, a short rest one minute interval, Okay, and then what is called a volume matched short interval and a volume matched long interval. Just like the name implies, they said, if people can move 10,000 pounds with a three minute rest period, and they can only move 500 pounds with a one minute rest period, let's go ahead and match the volume with a short rest. So basically they said three minute rest period, they can move a lot of weight. With this one minute rest period, we're gonna adjust the number of reps so that their total volume is matched. So if the three minute rest group moved 10,000 pounds, we're gonna make it so that the one minute rest group also moves 10,000 pounds. It just might be in the way of more reps, right? So basically trying to show that it doesn't really matter, we just wanna look at equal volume. So they equalized it that way. This is where the results completely blew the exercise science community back, right? But it's fascinating. The best results for muscle hypertrophy, for muscle growth, came from the long rest, three minute rest group, and the volume matched short rest. So a one minute rest still worked great, just as good as a long rest, as long as the volume, the total load moved, was matched. So your one minute rest periods, nothing really shorter, one minute rest periods are still gonna get you a lot of hypertrophy as long as you are adjusting the resistance 
to make it equal to what you'd be doing if you had a three minute rest period, right? So once again, if you had a three minute rest period and you could bench press a thousand pounds, but you can only bench press a hundred pounds with a one minute rest period, you need to do 10 reps with that 100 pounds. You need to get yourself to that equal point, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and read you an excerpt from this study. So it's coming from the researcher's mouth, not some harebrained weirdo on YouTube like me. These data suggest that the maintenance of high loads is more important for strength increases, while a greater volume load plays a primary role for hypertrophy, regardless of the rest interval. More rest equals more number of reps, equals more time under tension. So the mechanical tension does matter, but it matters over the course of the workout of the week of the month, not just the literal set or rep. But not so fast, right? This is complex stuff. First of all, full disclaimer, if you're a conditioned athlete, there's going to be periods of time where it is a very, very good thing to say do 30 second rest periods. Building what is called work capacity and oxygen capacity, those kinds of things are important. They're important for fitness, they're important for athleticism, they're also important for your lifting. So don't be afraid of occasionally doing a 30 second rest or even a 15 second rest. Don't be afraid of doing CrossFit style workouts now and then. Just don't expect them to be the kinds of workouts that in that moment build muscle. The muscle is gonna be built more so when you can get that maximum volume load. That being said, if you're like the kind of person that wants to do a 60 second rest period, I understand that. You just also have to exercise some caution because your total like allostatic load, the load on your body and the actual muscle damage could be a lot. And remember that muscle damage and creatine kinase levels that are elevated, that's not necessarily a prerequisite for building muscle. Like building muscle is not about all the muscle damage you can do. The more sore you get, the more beat up, the more inflamed, that does not mean anything. In fact, here's a study to reinforce this. Okay, frontiers of physiology, one minute or three minute rest periods. They had them do five sets of 10 reps of bench press and five sets of 10 reps of leg press. Okay, what they ultimately found is that the one minute group had significantly more muscle damage, higher creatine kinase levels, and higher inflammatory markers at 12 and 24 hours afterwards even though the ultimate amount of weight moved was roughly the same. The goal isn't high levels of stress, inflammation, and creatine kinase. The goal is the maximum recoverable volume. What can we get out of this, right? How do we get the most load moved with the maximal amount of recovery? So you may be able to perform that this workout, maybe next workout, maybe even next week's workout, but eventually those creatine kinase levels and that inflammatory response is going to wear on your recovery. So three minute rests are nice to throw in there so that you can go heavy with less creatine kinase and overall allostatic load on your body. So less stress on your body. So what I would suggest here, since we found that 60 seconds is a sweet spot, personally, I would go 60 second rest periods for most of your workouts, like for like two weeks, and then go maybe one week of a three minute rest period. And that way you can kind of tweak your hypertrophy and sort of the load on your body. There is also another study published in the journal Strength and Conditioning Research. And this is where things get really nuanced. And again, Dr. Mike Isertel talks about this before. The size of the muscle matters. As a matter of fact, like in this study, a one minute rest period, they found that the amount of oxygen uptake like, into the quadriceps was significantly higher than like in other exercises. No surprise, big muscles, right? So the size of the muscle is going to dictate how much recovery you have. But what's interesting is that sometimes the extremities actually demand more than sort of like the back and the chest. But when you're training back and you're training chest, you're also using the extremities, so it all kind of gets factored in. But big muscles, like muscles in your legs, you probably should give yourself a little bit longer recovery. So when you're programming your own workouts, give yourself 90 seconds for your legs, maybe 60 seconds for upper body, because it's not all relative. The amount of oxygen uptake and that requirement, that is going to tax your body and ultimately hinder your recovery to a certain degree. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. We'll see you tomorrow.